All right, so I will um, I will uh, make it somewhat different from the others. There's been a lot of science today, and I'm sure the board is probably getting a little tired, and you will have a number afterwards. I will be more, um, it's more like a business manager presentation. Since I've only been there for two years, and I've more or less spent all my time thinking, what are we going to do after PDP, and how do we generate funding? So. And as a matter of fact, I haven't written a single paper since I came here. Luckily, I've written a number before I came here, so they got published. But I haven't actually signed out a single paper since I came to PDP. <coughs> Partly because I've been busy with the funding. So you all see this one, and maybe you're not fully aware what that logo is. This is the Gloucester Survey of Norway logo, for those who are not aware of it. It also signifies that many of us from the Gloucester Survey has moved to here. So we just changed the logo. But since I was part of a group planning the new logo for the Gloucester Survey, I, I don't mind ruining it a little. So what you are actually looking at. The idea here is that for the solid air, we're looking basically from the lift so it's a free of gravity, put on the place, and we're looking at the coronal boundary here, which I actually share with um, anomalies, and my favorite for many years is this little red blob there on the coronal boundary, which I'm not going to talk about today. So I'll um, be a little business-alike, Three groups, as you all know, it looks quite terrifying with 19 people, because when I came here, I thought this was my retirement to a nice, quiet college at the University of Oslo, certainly with all these people around. <coughs> but you can see most of them are 20%, and most of them, uh, Ray, I never have anything to do with, except for a bear now and then. Um, and also, yeah, I work a little bit swear, but he normally belongs in another one. But it, originally, I thought about going through all these people are doing, but I'm not going to do that. Talk again this entire presentation from Tuesday, as many of you heard, so I made that into one slide, <laughs> simplifying his lecture. Uh, also, Sag again, there lots of the movie. I will only show one slide. I won't show the movie because when I asked him the movie, what is the time step? If it's 10 million 20, he said, time is dimensionless. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to show the movie. This is a typical <laughs> physicist approach. I like to know exactly when things happen in the lost of past. I'm not going to show it. <coughs> Point out we have like three new 100%. So we have um, Abigail, who's sitting here in the back. She just started. She's, she's been one and a half week in. Carmen is now 100%. She's also been there only since 1st of October, or a little before. And then I've hired another one, you, which you may never see, because he would actually be in Utrecht with Wim Spuckman, but it's part of an arrangement. I had with him, and he wanted this. Uh, he's in Bergen at the moment, but he will start in a trash to the gambler. So this is um, a kind of our group, and Stephanie already gave a talk <coughs> earlier today, so I'm not going to dwell on to that. Just uh, a few things about, this is just from what Bjorn gave us, what we are doing in, in, in our group, so if we look at industry or by resource institutions, we uh, we have this uh, project here with, um, with Sergei and Eva Hartz, which is an industry. Uh, this is from Statel. Statel actually paid my salary, so that's, that's this project. And I hope University will take over when they stop. I hope that's clear, otherwise I will have to go back to the survey after five years. And we also, I, my normal life was to have a lot of these Statel projects. This is the last project uh, I'm actually doing with Statel. And it's actually finished, you will see. So uh, this is actually, we do have funding for our dowel and his current salary, but this problem is actually gone. And uh, many of us, we had our own center for advanced study in the autumn last year and the spring this year, so you didn't see many of us. Most of us were spending our time there. So that's um, kind of these kind of, when it comes to um, the Norwegian Research Council, we are quite busy. You see here, there's Susan Boiter that we listed on her since she's 20%. <coughs> and she also had a PhD student which is listed with us. Uh, we have it, what we call a total Europe, it's called Mantle Forcing. It's with Pavel. I mean, there's very spelling of his name. You'll see a few others later. Here's one, Dobruvin, and there can be Dobruvin there, and there's without an O. So um, we have a little problems with this gentleman. Uh, we are also involved, although we are listed here, but we are also involved in this Petromax Omnis, which is Will Gabriel's. So that's um, kind of um, in the Wheaton Research Council. 
projects we are involved in. When it comes to EU, we are only involved in one that is quite big, and that's where Abigail and also the Cedric, and I might hire another one in January, and then it would be two more, so it would be five, six researchers on this project. And of course, that's quite substantial with um, two and a half million euros. <coughs> oh, did I go too fast? I don't have another one before. No, okay. So here is the target's talk from Tuesday. The board missed it, but here's the headlines. It's one page, and I highlight what it is. We're trying to measure the temporary rate on the Basal Trust from the Scandinavian flag lines. And he pointed out this was work in progress. I just found another one to point that out. So he, he's basically looking at these um, <coughs> rocks on the Basalt Trust, for instance, trying to look at um, Raman spectras and black shells, and they have uh, got this temperature profile, which is, is quite, um, probably for the first time, get some indication of temperatures on the Basalt Trust. And um, I'm not going to say more about that, because most of you heard it. Mouse. So here's Pablo uh, Dubri. And here's many times the O when the E is out, or there is no E, so uh, what is the real one? Is this the real proper one? No, it's my stage. That's your stage? Yes. That's your publication name? Yes. yes. So this is his uh, publication name. But normally he will be without these two red ones. So he works at actually trying to um, figure out how the place on the surface moving absolute. Uh, reference frames, so you look at hotspot tracks and look at the age, geometry age uncertainties, and you have to figure out the relative plate motions. And uh, you could have stopped there if you assume plumes just come straight up from the core mantle boundary, you could have stopped it as a fixed hotspot. We also know this is work from Bernard Steinberg and the Pioneer, who also worked with us 20% of what we hired him. And you actually do have a convective mantle, and if you want, you have to, for the advection of these plumes, you have to correct for these things. And, um, and Pavel has more or less finished that kind of work. Just uh, two examples of industry. So here is the one single slide from Sergei I love him. So this is um, sponsored by Dinorska. And I guess this is the title of it, the official title. Influence of Glacial Erosion, Isthosy, and Mass Balance and Topography, Greenland and North Sea. So this is um, one of the few industry projects we have they basically pay Sergei's salary. Uh, this is the other one, but it's finished really. Uh, and this was called improved plate models for S plates for the LM. These are software packages. And we actually, and this product actually is really to, to provide stack or what input data to do reconstruction and, and how you move these plates and what they look to find. It's a stat on, but it's finished and um, I don't think I will continue this for a while, and luckily I don't need the money. So we, um, I love to use this when it was fun, and we needed the money. But at the moment, I don't really need the money, and frankly, I don't think it's fun either. So I need to do something else. That might be filtered if you put it on the net. A lot of papers, and it's fun on PDP now. It's, it's like uh, everyone you first try with nature and then you try with science and maybe nature dying science, you might have in GRL or EPSL. It's, but that's, that's a good sign of people who are ambitious. You, you try to go for the, for the best ones. In our group, it uh, looks like there should be about 36 published, which is about 40% of PGP productions. And we have about 10 invited for keynote talks uh, this year. So there's nothing. Now, coming into the future, because we, I have spent the last two, three weeks of my life just reading proposals for others, and particularly these young scientists. <coughs> so I've decided when the deadline for this, and our six coming out of PDPs, I've decided when we know this is going to be announced, I will go away somewhere where nobody can reach me because there will be some crying and some cheering. You know, because to, it's very hard to get them. If you look in the Earth Science System, only one made it for the final, but actually no one actually got the grant. Okay? So we have six of them to come to the finals, about 20% chance, and maybe two, if we're lucky, comes to the finals statistically. But the good thing then is that the Norwegian Research Council gave them 75% of what they asked for. So if we statistically, we might get two in the final. And we got 16, 17 million from the Research Council for those two. 
So I just showed one in our group. So Stephanie Werner has one. It's of course in the planets. It's called Crater Clock, calibrating the crater in chronometer for planetary evolution. <coughs> so that's a starter on the way they divide us. If you are young in your PhD, you're called starter. And if you are just on the border to actually apply for them, you are at consolidate. So also Carmen Lina has one. This is called Arctic Connection in Earth's Hiccups. Was that the final title? And um, so she is not on planets, but she's on Earth, and she specifically wants to look at the Arctic and maybe what the Arctic, how that potentially can influence the rest of the planet. <coughs> so uh, that's two of them. It's, uh, it's a starter and consolidator. And then we have two more of them. Joe Van Hinsberg, which is also a starter. Subduction initiation, reconstruction from neotaxian kinematics. Intrinsic velocity of numerical steady grind for fine plate tectonics. And then we, so that's just a starter, and then Susanna Boiter is 20, she will sign it from NDU, but since she is 20% here, we, I happily say it's part of our group. And maybe if you get it, you might come there full time, you never know. So uh, it also has to do with subduction. I haven't read, this is the only one I haven't read, but I'm sure it's very different from these because they have very different background. This would be, I guess, much more modeling uh, applied. Uh, but you see, it's also has to do with subduction, modeling dynamic subduction initiation. I think both these two agree with subduction. How subduction starts is uh, it's a, it's a very, nobody really knows. You know. Plate tectonics, we have these three plate boundaries. We have to talk divergent, convergent, and, um, and lateral movement. But uh, how you actually initiate the subduction is an outstanding problem. So that's the four of these. So if all these went in, we would be how much? Six million euro richer. One, they're one and a half million each. So, so that would be a good start when PDP goes towards its end. We also have rejections. We shouldn't just talk about <laughs> Someone asked on Wikipedia, there were rejections first used in 14 15. What it mean was to throw or throw back. And this is one of my rejections. Uh, I'm, I'm an experimental scientist, and I don't have a lab still after two years. And he was rejected, I know from the committee, I was number one, I got seven, the highest, with the bureaucrats, and maybe this should be filtered as well. The bureaucrats and said it was not Norwegian national importance, partly saying there were so few of John in Norway, if there had been 50 of them who were interested in using his lab, we, we, it will have a national significance. So to get money for what we called experimental laboratory, which this is, it is, I don't know where you can get money from that in Norway, because it's only on these kind of things, where there are many users, so you have kind of a program, people come and match you and do their work. Which I sometimes, uh, but for experimental laboratories, I wouldn't know where to get money um, from the research council any longer, because it has this aspect of national strategic importance. So this one is the second time it failed, <coughs> so I won't apply to the research council any longer. Uh, also, Susanne Boiter has one for free now, and I guess it was a similar one who was rejected last year. I know also from the committee she was ranked one, but nobody got money in solid earth theology. Again, maybe filter, that means the one who works in the research council is supposed to look after us and is not doing his job. If he can't get one single project funded, when he fights with physicists, chemistry, or whatever. Not that I think suddenly physicists became some incredibly clever compared to geologists, but that's what we see over the last few years. No one funded. And actually, I know that foreign committees are really fed up with Norway. They come a year after the year, they read all this proposal, they rank them, and they ask me, who got funded? I said, nobody. And they're saying, what are we wasting our time going to Norway to sit in these committees? No one is funded. So, um, that should be filtered. <laughs> <laughs> now we have another one, which is not really mine. It's, um, it's Martian, but he decided to get sick on submission date, so I'm official. Uh, but it, this is a very tiny project with, uh, again, with, uh, with Bernard, and also take care of our old student here, Elvira, so if she doesn't feel lonely in Germany, we will have this little collaboration um, project. And that's really to look at the um, for instance, how 
along these uh, local lost and sound, how you can generate these kind of plumes from these cartoons where it is. But that's a tiny little project, maybe going over two years. <coughs> I said uh, I'm not too keen on doing work with petroleum industry, but we had a meeting with the Bears yesterday where I couldn't be because I have to be here now. But we have got to signal they are keen and they want us to come there in November. Um, we had a paper on diamond kimberlites and, and how they picked up diamonds. And in the beginning, the Bears, who are the biggest diamond, were very skeptical and they gave talks and didn't believe us. But now they think maybe this is not a bad idea, so they might want to hire us. <coughs> And I will be kind of predicting what area and where to look for diamonds. Not that I really understand why, because they have enough diamonds here, where if the bears open all the all the diamonds and sell them out overnight, diamonds wouldn't be worth more than a piece of paper, which you have in hand of It's totally artificial. So I don't really know why they want to find more diamonds, because they do have a lot of it. Stop other people from huh? Stop, Stop other people. Yeah. So it's kind of strange. I haven't really decided whether I'm, I'm keen. And also, um, I know when you work with the bears, that's 150% confidential. You know, they are so secretive about what they're doing. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little uneasy what I will do with this thing. So the final, of course, is beyond PDP. What do we do afterwards? And we have uh, we, we have center center application, which has spent an entire spring ruined my center when I was in the center of the advanced study by doing this thing. And I got even more angry yesterday when I heard when we had to deliver an application in early June. The research council certainly said, "Oh, there came so many applications, we can't deal with it. So now everything's going to be delayed into February, March next year for round one." Meaning, we're going to sit one and a half year after we send this before they make up their mind. They have no idea to be 139 applications, which was more or less what it was in the first round, than 100 last year. But they cannot handle it. And it makes me even more angry getting email from the research council every day with new programs, 30 million for sheep research, 60 for why are we sick, and you know, there must be billions of committees in this research council. But this should have been priority number one. And I'm surprised nobody tells them either. It's, it's just taken. Okay, we went to Marsh then for the first. And it's the last one we just show you what we are thinking about. And <coughs> some of you might see. So we call it Center for Earth Evolution and Dynamics. And it's not only solid earth. We saw from all the air, he talked about flooding and province and climate. So we want to mix that from the from the fluid part. So of course, this is a lot of what Hendrik is doing and Sarah Plumke. What we call Earth crisis is very, will be very important. We also what we call the dynamic world, looking at the plates and how they move, or long-term climate, how we how the color yoga can influence long-term climate. This will be on short-term climate. <coughs> we also go in the deep world, looking all the way down in the lower mantle, maybe into the outer pole, maybe dynamo. We don't have dynamo in this proposal partly because I don't feel we have the right expertise at the moment. So we kind of constrain ourselves to the lowermost mantle. Now we also have an earth and beyond, which of course Stephanie will be vital because she's the only comparative plantologist in Norway, so maybe we can increase to two if we get a center. <coughs> so these are the components, and then of course we have a modeling, which is also where PDP is strong, to model all these things, what we call vir vir virtual earth, and those who have been designated for this leader role here will be Martian, and of course there. This is we actually going to bring in Ray Atranas. Of course, Bernard Starberger would have been a great candidate if he decided to leave Germany and come here, but it's only 20%. We will put Ray Atranas down in the earth. Uh, Carmen Diner will run the Dynamic Earth Show, and Henrik Svensson is the Earth Crisis, and um, Stephanie Earth and beyond. So that means I made myself unemployed because I put people to do all this. <coughs> Maybe I can focus on science again. So the vision here is to develop an earth will expand how mantle drive, not only drive plate to turn to trigger, but also how it actually applied climate throughout history. So this is an extremely ambitious uh, project. And it brings you from the really from the core to the surface and into the atmosphere. So it's really a center to, to see it all connected. 
And I think that was the last, yes. <laughs>